So we're back to Monaco GP. I re-received these car, uh, these two boards here. Uh, this one has a player car crash issue. When you start, when you steer, and you crash, it just continuously crashes. It's a fault with that. So I got this one back, and we're going to look into that and fix that crash issue. And this is really where um, the Patreon support really helps. Because I was able to, off the schematic, build and source... This is the steering PCB. Um, based off of the schematic, I designed this board, sent away for it, um, populated it. Now I can actually steer. I'll be able to steer actually now. So this kind of stuff. And then I put this on my Patreon page so that it's available to, if anyone ever needs, hey, if you have a game like this, or something like that or there's and this is just one example I've got like 25 boards like this on patreon for you know so that's that's really where that support really comes in great and it keeps me wanting to document these repairs because um, I feel like I, I'm I'm getting something out of it and the community is getting something out of it so yeah so thanks to everyone who participates in supporting that. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> so we will figure this one out. Now this board was fine right here. So we're going to figure out what's going on with this board. And the good thing is, is Monaco is still pretty fresh in my mind. So let me get this all hooked up and everything, and I'll come back once I get all that done. All right, I have this thing hooked up. You see the lights are on, on it, the LEDs, I should say. And when I just interrupt the light, you see how the LED flashes. So it is working. Now, I don't know if this one's supposed to flash that one or that one's supposed to flash that one. This one's actually flashing this one. And that one, this one, but it really doesn't matter. All I need to do is be able to move the car. So if I coin this thing up, okay, it is now. Oh, that's not coin. This is coin. Here we go. Now I'm going to just kind of do this. Oh, the car's moving. Let me see. I'm going to do that and come over here with this and then continue to move the car over and you'll see this thing crash and you'll see what it does okay I'm just gonna kinda use that screwdriver to move this car over into the road here it comes Here we go, we're moving. And this one must move it the other way, yeah. See, now we're crashed, and it's just stuck like this. And, that, and it just stays like this. So it's not releasing this crash. Okay. So we'll just have to look at the schematic a little bit and find out. I try to look at the player car part of the schematic and find the crash signal or something like that. It'll just kind of look at it and decide where to go. But yeah, my uh, my steering PCB creation works. Yeah, this one, you, you, you do this one right here and it makes the car move down the track. You do this one right here. Just as quick as you can, just kind of make the light flash as quick as you can like this. Oh, yeah. Like this. And it'll make the car slowly move up the track. So it works. That's great. Um, yeah, so let's. I'm going to turn this off. We'll get the schematic out and just kind of see if we can't figure out what's going on with that. We know it's this board because the operator actually um, tested the boards after I, I'd repaired this set, remember. But I didn't have this at that time, I hadn't even designed this board. 
So just in case I ever got with another one of these games, I went ahead and I designed this board. I didn't design it. I just made it off of the schematic. It was already designed. So I just made the board, sent off for it, and built the thing up. So now I can actually steer the car, make sure it's steering. So awesome. All right, let's get the schematic. Okay, kind of looking around on this. And here's the schematic. I don't see anything that indicates crash or anything. That, but what I did see is this home position signal, which when it goes low, obviously puts your car at the home position, I would think. So that's got to do with the placement of your car, right? This circuitry right here. So I just started kind of messing around with this. It's a 279. It's IC27. And it's right here. And if I coin this thing up and move my car down into the track, There we go. Come on, move. Car's moving, car's moving. Car's moving and crashed. Okay, now we're in that crash fault. And if I just kind of start poking around on this, this 27, and we see on this one here, it says the set is pin 2, the reset is pin 1, output is pin 4. Let's see what's it say it should be. Okay, we got 1. 1 is the reset and it's not reset. 2 is the set, it's not set. And then you got, it's low. So we don't, I don't know what it's supposed to be, to be honest. And then we got pins six, five, six, and seven. Okay. And I'm just kind of messing around. And if I jump a new chip over that, it starts working. So I may have stumbled on it quite early. And quite frankly, got lucky. <sighs> Which is nice. It's, it's, it's involved in this circuit. It, it could very well just be this 279. And I would actually have to get the analyzer out on that, and I'm not going to do that. I'd have to probe all of the inputs as well as the output and trigger on um, either the set or the, the reset going low and then see what the output does according to that. And I really, I'm not, I don't want to do that. It's just easier for me to go ahead, I'm going to replace this part and see if that takes care of it. If it doesn't take care of it, if we still have that issue, it's something associated with that circuit. So we'll figure it out. I'm going to go ahead and just replace that guy and see what happens. Part replaced, 279. Still crashing. Crashing forever. Okay, so we know it is associated with that circuit. So we'll just trace back on the schematic. Okay, from just messing around with this, I have discovered that every time I'm in a crash situation like this, if I short <clears throat> and ground pin 7, watch, there, I grounded pin 7. I'm in a crash situation. I'll ground 7. There you go. 
Once I crash again, ground pin 7. There you go. I'm just in never ending crash now. So I have to move the car. This one, I think. No, I need to just reset this thing. Anyway, I if I ground pin 7, the car stops the crash situation. So I'm going to have to look into that, follow pin 7 on this. Okay, yeah, I moved the car back up out of the way. And if I ground that pin 7, now pin 7 is grounded. This is obviously hit detector, whatever, or, you know, crash. Because I can drive right through the cars now without crashing. And you might be able to see that here in a second. If one comes to the crash, there we go, went right through it. No crash. This is with holding pin 7 grounded. Now if I remove that ground, now I'll crash. There we go, and stay crashed until I ground pin 7 again. <clears throat> so it's downstream of pin 7 is the problem. So, yep, pin 7 is right here. It goes into an OR, and then that output goes back into that. I'm not worried about that. And that comes up to a 151 pin 7, an exclusive OR. That's scoreboard stuff, I think. <clears throat> And over here, don't know, but there's some stuff to look at here. So we'll start, and there's this 23 down here as well. We're just going to have to start everything that's kind of associated with that we'll look at. All right. Okay, so first thing I did was I looked at this and how this chip works. You have a set and a reset line that uh, dictates what the output will be. Well, pin 5 is the reset, and I know that if I ground pin 7... You know, the car straightens up. So, pin 5 is the reset line, which will make 7 go low. So, I was looking for a low pulse on pin 5 of that chip. And I'm not getting a low pulse on that at all. So, that means it's not straightening out the car at all. So, I think it's back this way. So, we have a... You need two lows to get a low. What is what chip do you need two zeros to get a zero output? Twenty-three. If both outputs are zero, I think that's a not or twenty-three. Twenty-three might be a zero two. Chip number twenty-three. Twenty-three is a thirty-two. Oh yeah, thirty-two. A thirty-two. If both, you need both of them to be zero to get a zero. So I might have to look at this thirty-two and see what we're getting. All right, fellas. Well, I've forgotten where we left off, but I've been really searching for this issue with the crash problem 
and I've been all over the circuit and I went through because I had logically analyzed all of this stuff and everything was looking okay so I desoldered and removed chips put new chips in looking for what is going on here and I got I did find there were a couple of bad chips but I don't know if they were used gates like an 86 had a bad gate um I don't know if it went bad at when I desoldered I I, I tend not to think so so I do believe that I did find a couple of bad chips and just replacing some stuff. Um, but I put it back together and I was still getting the same thing with the crash issue. Well, I came to this guy right here. This is, remember, this is that circuit right in this area. Because every time you crash, you go to a home position, which is up on t the right side of the screen. Every time that your car crashes, he'll go up to the home position. So, and that signal right there is called home position. And it is an active low from this AND gate. So when you get, or 23, what is 23? 23 is an OR. So you have to have two zeros on the, the inputs of this to get that to go low. That's why this is drawn this way. It's it's telling you it's an OR gate, but it's drawing it as an AND gate with the desired output being a zero. So it's telling you that it's looking for two zeros, both inputs, and this input and this put, this input be zero to get the desired output of a zero. This is a classic case of um, drawing a gate in a different way and it's telling you how it's drawn what the desired output in and output is and what the inputs have to be so anyway that's our circuit here and then this wasn't doing anything so this never went zero and when you crash this should go zero so I just kind of backtracked up I, I looked at this part be, and what was throwing me off with this is because I had analyzed everything and all of the logic levels are good. And I'm going to tell you there is a, a phenomenon with these logic chips where one chip will have some kind of stray capacitance or a partial short inside of it or whatever and it will affect chips in the same circuit but it's disguised it does the, the bad chip is actually disguised as a good chip so that makes it to where you almost have to just start removing parts to find the bad part and this 14 i believe is the culprit i believe that this chip right here that gets these signals from this 85 this 85 right here outputs these signals that come and then they're inverted here and they go into another 85 and the outputs of that are what are in the chain that gives us that home position signal so what I did my next step was I removed this 85 which I had analyzed and it it was fine on under analysis and I removed the 14 and I removed this 85 that's these three chips right here and now the crash signal works see um, let me put this up here and I'll go ahead with my little steering PCB and I'll move the car down to where it crashes and you'll see after you crash the home signal home position signal will go low and your car will go right up to the home position let me move this guy down here we come we're moving slowly but surely there and boom back to home position And there you go, home position. So that's the fix on that one. So good documentation of these Monaco boards.
because you know these circuits are not really extremely well defined in the schematic so that is the crash circuit and how that works when you crash it causes you know logic levels to change this home position signal will go low your car will go back to the home position and it resets you know and gets ready for another crash so that's that I am going to go in and let's just find out which one of these chips I'm going to put them on my tester and I'm going to find out which one of these is actually bad my guess is it it's probably one of the 85's I don't know we'll see I'm going to leave it as it is with these new parts that I put in here's all of the old ones that I had removed that most of these tested good two of them did test bad but I'm going to, I'm just going to leave the new parts in it that I put in it just for longevity's sake. I've got them replaced. Why not just leave it replaced with new parts? So Yeah, so let's go in and take a look at these, put these three in the tester and see which one of these actually tests bad. One of them was definitely bad. Okay, so after testing chips both of those 85s that I removed, the one here and the one right here, both of those tested bad. The 14 tested okay. So that is that. So that's going to do it for this one again. And yeah, I don't know if those 85s had just gone bad or when I previously analyzed them, they're not really changing states these this stuff is all event based logic basically you get a quick pulse on something and it sets a logic change chain so i was analyzing it in a a static state and it was good but obviously when events happen i, I wasn't catching an event or whatever you know with these chips and they just wouldn't change state properly i guess that's my guess so sometimes when you get chips in logic like this, old logic, old boards are a lot like this, where they're a lot of kind of, I call it event-based logic, to where it's, it'll be high for um, five minutes, and then something will happen and it goes low and changes state. And that's, you know, state analysis is not one of my, not not something that I really do. I use a logic analyzer for timing analysis. So that's kind of one of the shortcomings of an analyzer. Is uh, I don't I just don't do state timing. I do I do or state analysis. I do timing analysis. So yeah, sometimes you just got to remove parts and and test them. So anyway, that's gonna do this one. Um, once again, thanks to all my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel and helping me keep documenting this kind of stuff for everyone out there in the community. You know, it really helps and uh, keeps me going. So I, I do appreciate it. Shout out to every one of you. All right, guys. We'll see you on the next one. And bye for now.